Hey guys, welcome to the Dreamland. I'm Jim, your host. Join with me. We have Dark Horse as always, with Pidge01 as always, and we are joined for the first time by Fire Blaster. Um, I gotta get your Twitter in here. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about two regional tournaments that happened on the same day, uh, last Saturday. First being boss battle number one, uh, that was in Indiana, Indianapolis, I believe, um, featuring Wookie, uh, featuring Mark Sanchez, uh, a bunch of Chicago players actually came out for that too. Uh, and then also Hype Train 6, which is a regional in Kansas, had some Colorado players fly out for that as well. Uh, and then after that, we're just going to talk about secondaries. Uh, so a lot of people have secondaries. Uh, some people don't have anything except for their one character that they play. Uh, so we'll get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, so first of all, uh, boss battle. None of us went. Uh, Jason, your brother went. Yeah, he did pretty yeah, well. Uh, I think. Mark, Mark went. It was uh, Stud still went. Um, that was it from like over here. But then, you, like you said, a bunch of Chicago guys went. Um, I know Han Solo and Combo Blaze were there. Did Battle Cow make it out? I heard people well, were talking about him. Um, I don't think so. Hmm. I said Han Solo. I don't know if he's actually if he's Chicago. No, I was just like. He's definitely, yeah, I think he's it's definitely. Illinois. I think that's okay. Illinois, just not like Chicago is a huge state, region. Right? Yeah. Well, he's definitely in the Midwest. We have like people west of Chicago, people east of Chicago, and then Chicago. And the three groups almost never mix at all. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've always considered Han Solo to be Chicago, whether he is or not. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so. God, I just had this up. I should probably pull Actually, this up again. This was there. Mad Rush from Colorado. Mm. Um, CCG from Texas. Yeah. And uh, how'd they do in that? God. Fire, did you pull um, it up? Because I just pulled it up and lost it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still got who, do you, who do you want to know about? Like... Well, Mark, so, Mark, top Mark three. Mark, who won? Mark, got second. Han Solo got third. Um, That's the, Han Solo got fourth. Now. Wait. Yeah, I thought Han Solo didn't do super hot. He lost to Wookie. Wookie. Yeah, Wookie got third, Han Solo got fourth. Oh, Han Solo. Yeah, yeah. and Han lost to Mark as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I expected it to go. I mean, you can't be, yeah, you can't be a, a Fox main that isn't good against a Pika matchup and hope to do well. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, that was super exciting. Didn't didn't uh didn't Bark get like a pound of salt or something? Or is that Wookie? What happened there? Wait, what happened? I heard that there was like a someone got a pound like the Indiana crew bought a, like a five pound or one pound thing of yeah. salt. Yeah. So the whole thing, the tournament really started because Wookie was going to be out there for work. Oh, okay. That's why his face was all over the graphic and everything. Um, and they bought him a fifty a fifty pound block of salt. <laughs> That's absurd. It's just it's just a block of salt, but you know, much bigger. Which is a bummer because I think fifty pounds is like the limit for uh, a checked item. On a plane. So maybe he like chipped off some salt and gave it to Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, bitch! <laughs> you claim that your uh, microphone works, but I don't hear it anymore. Oh. Am I the only person I can't hear? Ooh, this is. I guess I can just monologue for a little bit. Hmm. Anyway, that's odd. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna try to reconnect in this call. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties. Let's see. Whoa. What a world, huh? Jimmy Joe, get out of here. That was super was, weird. Was that just me? No, I think that was all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I lost too. Yeah, Pidge, Pidge, you started talking and then just immediately, like, zipped out of the conversation. No, I just said, uh, I bet they did that on purpose. And then as soon as I said that, like, Skype crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Is Pidge echoing for anyone but me? 
Yeah, Pidge, if you turn your mic down a little bit, it probably, or like the sensitivity. Talks, like she, I think she's using push to talk because she's using uh, speakers. Oh, yeah, I forgot my headphones. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. You just turn your uh, turn your sound down a little bit. I don't know what's going on because I'm turning off my mic whenever I speak. Oh, is it like the Jimmy Joe's situation? Well, no, it's just an echo. Mm. For I mean, me. I mean, you probably just set it to push it talk so it doesn't echo when you're not talking. It wasn't echoing before. No, I mean, there's literally a button on my microphone that I turn off whenever I'm not talking. <laughs> oh. That's, that's the next level of push to talk. That's great. Literally push to talk. <laughs> um, well, we can talk more about um, Indiana. There's so there's crew battles. Uh, there was Bloomington. Uh, there was Indianapolis. There was like a Chicago, Texas group, and then there was I think probably Bark. I think it was probably Baltimore with uh with yeah, LA. Springs. Is that what it was? Uh, the crew battle was like LA, Baltimore, and Colorado Springs. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. That's super most, funny. Most Baltimore Springs. <laughs> Dude, that's that's incredible. Uh, yeah. So uh, Indiana did not do well. One team. <laughs> there is one team lost. I think they took four stocks. And then one team took six stocks against the other the other crew. <laughs> Chicago won though. Yeah, but it was pretty close. I didn't see it. I think it was within four or two or something like that. See, what I, I prepared so well, I have all the brackets actually in chat right now. But if I pull them up on the screen right over here, it will just display it on on the stream because my uh, my computer's like twelve inches across. But at any rate, uh, I don't know. It was pretty good. I don't think that there was anything that was a huge upset, but it was interesting to see everyone. Well, awesome. It was awesome that everyone flew out, obviously, but it's interesting to see how people stuck, like, uh, what do you call it, stacked up against each other. Especially with Chicago, because who knows with those guys. Um, I guess we can talk about a little bit about Hype Train 6. Just so you guys know, it's basically Hype Train and the Hype uh, event series are a Kansas tournament. It was hosted by a guy who used to live in Kansas but now lives in California. And he flies out to like meet up with his friends and then he throws a tournament. <laughs> and it was, like, his tournaments are so good. They did a one day. They <laughs> overstepped their bounds a little bit. They did one day uh, 64 melee, melee doubles, melee amateur bracket, uh, PM, PM. Amateur, maybe doubles as well. Wii U doubles, Wii U regular, and Wii U amateur bracket. All in one day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. I don't think, I think everything ran on time or within 30 minutes of being late. It was, it was nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you ever, that's, the, so we always go to his tournaments because they're always amazing. But, um, no, we had Colorado guys come out. Uh, so Mad Rush was up in um, in Indianapolis, but we had Detan and Dog, who I think are three and five on their on their PR. Uh, and I think they got first and third at our tournament. I busted out. I went one and two. <laughs> I lost to people I should not lose to. It was awful. Um, but it was really good. No, I don't know. It was super fun. We had. It, uh, Obviously, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, and Missouri all come. So, really sweet, like twenty six people. So we're we're keeping it up. Um, besides that, there's not. I actually don't know of any other current events going on. Do you guys know of anything besides Fire Blasters tip of the day kind of things? <laughs> happening like right now. Yeah, I mean, do we know? Uh, no, I mean, not, not to, besides the Super Bowl. I mean, are there any Smash events coming up? Um, probably the most recent one, the one that's like the most sudden notice is uh, I gotta say, uh, Shots Fired Two. Yeah. So when is that? In March? March. Like the beginning of March, like the first week. <laughs> so we talked about 
we talked about uh, last or last of the time we talked about all these new majors putting in 64 to put in there, like to gain some validity. And then we got two, two majors right after that event, both of whom have questionable reputation. Uh, what was the other one? Apex. Oh, okay. Apex confirmed. Yeah. Um, but I know. Yeah, the, the thing about Shots Fire 2 is that Shares made a post explaining that he's completely in charge of si everything 64 and that all they, all they did was give him space to run it. So, yeah. Yep. Which is ideal. They might, give, they, might give, they might give us some TVs, but Ooh. everything, the, the schedule, the stream, like the whole the turn the bracket, everything is all us. Hmm. I mean, not ideal, but that's... Still an event. <laughs> like, I, I, no, I mean, the next thing is we get to set our own schedule. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess. So whenever I talk about, I think there's there's two parts of being a 64 player right now. One of them is that as a player, you want it to have the best experience, right? Like you want to be like, oh, it's a well-run tournament. It happens on time. It happens at a good place, et cetera, et cetera. And having just space and nothing else makes it just, it, that's perfect for if you care about being a player. And then the other part is if you really care about getting the scene to grow. And I know myself, um, I know myself, I really care about, you know, getting more outreach, getting, I don't know, that type of thing. So like Genesis 3, there was that huge, that con the conflict was, do we want to push for, Saturday finals instead of Sunday finals? Or what do we want to do with that, right? And as a player, you're like, Saturday would be the best, right? Like, so that no one's tired, no one's whatever. And then Sunday gets you this huge outreach, though. You have more stream uh, viewers than any other time. You have people watching. You have it on the main stage. I don't know. So I, I have that confliction when I'm when you guys say like oh yeah this is not ideal I'm like kinda <laughs> depends. Um, people are saying in the Twitch chat that you're much louder than all of us. Yeah, I saw Jason just sent that just sent that to me, so I <laughs> I turned you guys up a little bit. I'll turn myself down as well. <laughs> I was like I'm monologuing and trying to like set volumes yeah, so that doesn't make sense. <laughs> basically, you're you're significantly louder than us. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fine on my end. Oh. I don't mean, like, yeah, it sounds fine on on our end, but when it goes through OBS or whatever yeah. he's using, oh freaking OBS! Yeah, that's tricky because you got to do that manually. Yeah, I'm setting it out. I'm trying to get at least a better balance. Mm. All right, that's probably good. So yeah, I don't know. I, it, I, my opinion for all of that is if we get time, if we get time on a major stream that everyone's gonna be watching. I say, you know, we get we go for the schedule they give us, and not for what's optimal for uh, us as players. But if if you know we're gonna like, if we have to stream on our own streams and not and not like VGBC or whatever, then 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 we'll pick whatever schedule is most comfortable for us. That's what that's my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely always a balancing act, right? Like, I, mean, I don't know. Right now, these majors. Like for a, for sixty four to get major stream time, you know, like like Smash and Genesis, we're gonna have the early morning slot every time. Um, and people might might not like a ten a.m. start, but then you know forty fifty thousand people watch it. Yeah, exactly. I think I think like the early it's not necessarily a bad thing because if you think about Genesis three when there were people that were getting into the into the stadium because they wanted to get good seats for Melee and Wii U like they saw sixty four and then they got really invested in it without even really expecting to be invested in the matches that were happening. I think like having we're always going to get the early morning slot, but I think it might actually be better for us than we think. Yeah, yeah. I mean early mornings like it's not that bad, but when we start at ten a.m. For SmashCon, that means anyone watching on the West Coast is gonna have to start watching at seven. And yeah, that's for the most true. Part, this is not gonna happen. Yeah, definitely. At and least at Genesis, we start at eleven Western time. Right. That's the thing. Like having a having a ten a.m. start in California is great. Yeah. Because then, because then most people, it's like a reasonable time to watch. But when we're starting at ten on the East Coast, that's kind of rough. Mm -hmm. so, but, what but still, it's, it's either that or 
you know, one of us streams it for like a couple hundred people. Yeah. You know, at a so, later time. So what I'm hearing is we need to have a Chicago major. Perfect. <laughs> just split it. No problems. Or just I'm Colorado. Down for dates up on the West Coast. I'll keep using my my credit card points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, that's good. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be something we can just, like, broad stroke it. We kind of have to decide on an individual basis, but I don't know. I'm always, if it's a balancing act, I'm always in the favor of the scene a little bit more than I am of the individual. But I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. I'm sure that's that type of <laughs> that type of thing is going to get brought up a lot, I think, when uh, we're talking about different things. I mean, even just the simple things of, like, should we be nice to to people that don't play the game? I'm like, yeah. What's wrong with you? Why wouldn't you be nice to them? And of course, Co like oh Rob, Cover's like, yeah, but they're wrong. <laughs> Even when you're Dude. nice to them, they just they still don't like you. I, yeah. Like, I try not to follow too many of the like obnoxious posts on NA, oh. but hey, Cobra is going all out with this this like stage selection tournament rule set thing. Wait, which which one's this? Did I miss it? He's like arguing with Z-Rex or something about playing high roll. I don't know. Oh, was this the thing that? I'm, kind of, I'm kind of involved in that. A little well, bit. Yeah, that's what it turned into. But that was the thing that someone's like, "Hey, I'm gonna like host this like 64." And yes. I was thinking over that this. What do you guys think about this rule set? And everyone's like, "Screw you, man! You don't know anything about this game." <laughs> yeah, that's basically oh. how. It People happened. weren't that aggressive. I think people had, I think for the most part, like at least ninety-five percent of the responses were pretty intelligent and like not not offensive at all. Yeah, yeah, and then but you get enough of them that it's just like, why is this guy being mean to me? I just asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> but then people, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. So what are you gonna do? I mean, this is the guy who's toing, uh, who's gonna to shuffles eight. And they just included sixty-four. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so that that's why that's where the conflict came in. It wasn't just some local TO. It's like yeah, it's a little bigger than that. Well, yeah, so, shuffle's a good tournament series. I I hope that they follow our advice at least. I imagine they will. I I don't yeah. know. He, he seems like pretty told, like like as someone who actually runs tournaments that have four stages, but I've also been to two shuffle events. I I think that they should run the Dreamland only rule set. Like that's just how it is. Well, you guys missed, uh, there was actually, I think because of that post, there was a, there's a huge post going on in the Zeri Smash 64, the Facebook group, mostly oh, because yeah. I wrote like, a, <laughs> I wrote a, like an 870 word essay. I've, I don't know. I know Fire Blaster, you're definitely in favor of keeping Peaches and Congo banned. I've seen a lot of your posts and I read them when I've done my research, but I am someone who has still not been <clears throat> convinced, I guess, that the two I are bad. I mean, play, play not, Falcon uh, on Peaches. Dude, I liked Falcon on Peaches when I played Falcon. I mean, I, I've I've played my share of fair games like with Boom, like one v one, just like as hard as possible in those other stages that aren't Dreamland, and it always comes down to something that none of us like. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I just see. Like, just like on Congo, like uh, like I was Yoshi versus his whatever or his Kirby, and it was just like I, I'm I'm on the left side on the left platform, he's on the right platform, and then we're just like yeah, same right. there, yeah, like yeah, it's, it's just basically high roll light. Yeah, and I I believe that that evidence is out there. I just haven't seen it. Like I, the the video that everyone posts, like if it's banning high roll, they post Gerson versus Boom, and it's like that's a really good piece of evidence. <laughs> But like, when you're posting, like, Congo yeah, is, like, uh, it's, like, okay, Wizrobe versus, yeah, Wiz Robe, Fire versus Fire, Fire Robe. And it's, like, yeah, dude, did you watch uh, Kiro versus Wizrobe? It's a Wizrobe match at a high level is going to be like that, regardless of the stage. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I honestly. The, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the evidence-based approach is exactly why I have all the stages legal in my tournaments, because no one in my region really plays like that. And that's why we still have them. But I'm never going to campaign for those stages to be legal in a major. Yeah, I can see that. I and mean, we were talking locally and stuff like that, and got into a whole thing of like, well, what if, um, you know, if the majors are doing Dreamland only, shouldn't we follow that so that we can get the best practice? And I'm like, who cares about the majors? You know, you go there every time you can, but in the Midwest, that's like a few players, like a couple times a year, maybe. We played on like Final Destination and stuff for like a month and a half. Yeah. Like, 
practice on whatever, you yeah. know, for your weekly. Yeah. I think the practice argument is highly suspect because people are playing friendlies all the time on Dreamland anyway. Like, do you ever see anyone play a match that's not on Dreamland, even a friendly? It's very, very rare. And, like, I, when when I'm running these tournaments, like, the counter stages, you never see them outside of the first two rounds of bracket unless it's, like, why bomb and fuck battles doing the Falcon Diddle Gentleman's Rule, whatever. It's... It's just there because, like, if people want to use it, usually they you don't see them after the first couple of rounds. And most of the people who are counterpicking Hyrule and Peaches and Congo, they're not really going to Nationals anyway. Yeah. I will say that I've played plenty of Mexican players online, so I'm very fluent in uh, Sector Z. So if you ever <laughs> need to fight me on that stage, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, that's... Sounds racist, but I don't know. I feel like that's not. It's just a normal thing. It's, it's a normal Z, thing. Yeah. I just go, I just go Donkey standard. Kong and yeah. hang out on the right side and just Dude. throw people into the I do hate that stage. It's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Donkey, Donkey Kong, great transition. What? Thank you. Thank you, Dark Horse. <laughs> Let's talk about secondaries. We brought Fire Blaster on today because uh, he is known for having a couple characters that he plays with regularity. Uh, his main two being Yoshi Mario. Uh, a good character in Mario, and then he also plays Fox occasionally. Uh, we, we were talking beforehand, right? And you you were talking about you choose to play Fox mostly beginning of tournament, right? Yeah, I play Fox against players that I'm pretty sure like I won't need to uh, give it give him my all, and it's it it's so that if anyone's watching me play, I, they don't watch my my like one of my mains and try to study it and see like how to beat it because so you... that's 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 a pretty uh that's a pretty next little tactic that's that might that's starting to happen now well so do you watch other like do you when you watch other players do you catch on to them like they of the tournament do you see their like mistakes and figure out how to exploit them um i'm or not it... successful all the time but i try to do that now okay it's like there's no reason not to honestly like when you you do everything you can to win so no i i agree with that i was wondering about that because it's like you watch the videos you can so you know you watch boom at genesis and you go all right he's gonna be at this next tournament what did he do last time i wonder if this will work against that i always wondered how people do day to day and see if they i don't know do people make mistakes that they only make that day do you guys notice that i i I have no idea at my level. Um, well, I can't speak for anyone else specifically. Actually, that I've seen Wizard, uh at, at, a, at a few majors. He'll pl he'll play like like he's rust like he's really rusty, making several mistakes. And then day of the tournament, day of the bracket, he just he gets better as the bracket move, advances on, and he'll just start stomping everyone. Uh, like specifically Apex 2015. He, he didn't start out too hot in bracket, you know, almost, almost lost uh, to Wybum by one stock until Wybum decided to stall on him and then Wizard made the comeback. But he went from doing that to going all the way to third place, at, you know, at Apex. So do you think that's, hmm, because I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I, saw, I saw like you know Wizard just make a lot of mistakes before, and he stopped making them as the bracket went on. So were they technical mistakes or like decision making? Uh, a bit of both. He's he's a you know he plays every Smash well, game. Yeah. So I guess he has to adapt to his a sixty four only mentality. Yeah. As he plays. Well, they always say Wizard's like one of the top three people at all the Smash. Like if he considered all of Smash skill. Probably top. I mean, him, YouTube King, one of the people that plays like Brawl or or Four or whatever. I don't know, Zero maybe. Yeah, probably, he's, he's definitely up there. Um, yeah, I think that's interesting. I definitely play better as the day goes on. I know people kind of fall off. I don't know. Probably why Boom says that he plays better than in the morning or when it's not in the morning because maybe he needs to warm up. Yeah. Or maybe he just has a messed up sleep schedule. I don't know, man. <laughs> He's just a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you keep playing and you, you get better. Mm. But one thing that at least messes me up is when you have a big break. Yeah. Like like let's say let's say you have a ten AM pool 
and then there's like you know however many waves of pools but then like genesis you're like 10 a.m pool and then bracket didn't start until like 6 p.m mm. so you played your matches and you were done by like 11 30 and then you didn't play again until six like, yeah it's tricky that's that's crazy you have like um I mean, some people will, like, go take a nap. Like, Kiro, I think, went back to the hotel. That's what I would... I mean, I've been... I slept. I was, I was, like... A bunch of us were, like, helping run pools and, and fill out brackets and that kind of stuff. So a lot Should have done that. Sleep. But, yeah, that, that was kind of rough. <laughs> I, I mean, I... Like... I feel like long tournaments tend to be the worst when you don't have a break though. I mean, not, not, not a four hour break, but you know, like you get lunch, you sit down, you go, all right, let's recuperate. Let's, you know, and then, but then you have to sit down and you have to start the process over again. So, yeah. I, I mean, you have to, you have to, you have to think about it like an athlete does, but like you need one up time. Yeah. And all, like you, you know, if you're playing in, I don't know, a, a soccer tournament or something, you have like play two games and you have a buy, like, you can't just like do nothing the entire buy period and then just start playing your your game next. You gotta yeah. warm up and back into it. Like, yeah. So yeah, you kind of have to treat it the same way if you want it to do well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Or for those the, those of us that were not in soccer, we were in marching band. <laughs> gotta do the yeah. same thing, guys. <laughs> I never played soccer. I played one <laughs> frisbee, but I picked soccer. Of I course, you played frisbee. <laughs> Play like <laughs> like five games on Saturday and then three or four on Sunday. Like oh. this is a long weekend. Thank you. How do you do that and smash? I can't imagine. Well, I I, I haven't I haven't played much frisbee in the last year. Hmm. Had one shoulder surgery and then and having another one soon. So. Dang. Well. My arms don't work very well. Uh, back to the topic at hand. Uh, secondaries. I, I guess one question. So I'm a man that only does one character. I only play one character in tournament. I only play one character. I don't mess around with it. Uh, I used to have a few characters, and I always was faced with the question of what do you choose? Like, what do you if you don't know what your opponent's going to play? What are you going to play? What do you pull out? Because I had a falcon. And I was always, I was poor, uh, terrible at the Kirby matchup and I didn't know what to do. I was like, what do I do? How do I, how do I face this? Do I do this? Do I do someone better against Kirby? How do I go against that? So I'm kind of curious, um, especially you, Fire Blaster, what, what do you, how do you choose? What do you do? Is it just what you feel is better or you kind of scope out the opponents or? So that's, that goes back to what I said earlier about watching my, my opponents who I'm going to face it later ahead, like ahead in bracket. So I try to figure out what characters are good at, what, what I could possibly play. And based on that, I, I pick, you know, either my main Yoshi or or my my older main, like Mario, who's actually now, like, I guess, my secondary. Because I, I use him to counter Falcons. Because Falcon is mm -hmm. Yoshi's, in my opinion, Yoshi's worst matchup. Or second worst matchup. One of those. So oh. whenever, whenever I see I know I'm going to face a Falcon, I just pick Mario. So you just do it. You just do like a pocket. Okay, that's interesting. I was wondering about that because I can't imagine why you'd ever want to pick Mario. <laughs> I thought it was just Mario if you're playing stranded. Oh no, I, I use him against against Falcons because like Fal Falcon Falcon such a coin a coin flip in the neutral game against Yoshi that whereas with Mario I can I can still kill Falcon in one grab or hit, but I don't die in one hit from Falcon. Right. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Stranded does have a mental block against Mario, but I, I like to pick him against Falcons. So. Wait, so what's what's the story there? Oh, you don't know about me versus Stranded? Dude, I don't know anything about anything. You gotta you gotta oh, inform me. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> so ever like my first console tournament was at Zenith 2013, where I faced Stranded in pools. He beat me two one. And then, and that was one of like three or four victories that we've had over twenty five games. So basically, I have an, at least a ninety percent win record against Stranded, <laughs> just with my Mario. <laughs> yeah, um, at SmashCon, Stranded was actually up two games to zero 
and Fire brought it back three in a row. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> actually, it, I think it was a best. It was a best of three, not a best of five. So he was oh, up okay. the first game because I because he was talking about that was after Apex. So he was talking about I was he was gonna pick other characters than Falcon. So I picked Yoshi, and then I, I didn't know that Stranded had woken up that morning <laughs> and he said I'm gonna go Falcon for things. So he went Falcon. He beat my he beat my Yoshi. Then I picked Mario. He was up uh he was up several stocks against my Mario, but then he he squandered all his stocks away. And then the third game, I like once again he got the lead on me, but then I reverse five stocked him. That's so yeah, it was pretty brutal. I forgot it was best of three. Next time Kira's on here, I'm I'm it was, I, um, oh, it was man. stranded Caesar that went that was two oh Oh yeah. I got that, stuff. That's certainly that was an impressive match too. Yeah, Caesar has Caesar has a Mario and they play all the time, right? Like aren't they they're in the Koro Shio or whatever together? I don't know how often they play together. Mm. At least anymore. Uh, but yeah, they're they're in the same little group. Crew. <laughs> um that's okay. So yeah, you would think he would be better against Mario cuz I don't feel like I don't know. I feel like Mario is pretty easy to beat. Because I, I, Fire Blaster, I don't know if you remember this, but we played online a few months back, at least, because you don't play online anymore, I don't think. But we played for a few hours, and you played just Mario. Uh, yeah, my online tag's Manhoney, so that's you might not remember it at all. And you beat me every time, so it's, <laughs> or more or less every time. But I just le learned everything about Mario right then. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm never losing to this character again unless they're at least as good as Fire Blaster. <laughs> Oh no! Nah, yeah, like people underrate that like Mario in that matchup. In the same way that Falcon can just get under Yoshi and one one hit can lead to death on Yoshi. Even though Yoshi it seems like he should be able to fight against Falcon, well, it's the same thing for Falcon versus Mario, where you know Falcon can just run circles around Mario, bear through his fireballs, do whatever he wants with Mario, but. Mario just he just has moves that work around Falcon. His, his up air will just beat down here. Falcon's down here at any time. You know, one little, you know, Falcon gets touched by one fireball. Mario's right there ready to grab you and toss you off stage. Yeah. And then it's just down airs into oblivion. <laughs> down air and air. Come on now. <laughs> gotta oh, gotta oh, respect yeah. the man. <laughs> no, Mario, like, you can like, just like... do down air, down air, down air off stage. <laughs> Or even like Falcon coming. lands the back on Mario zero percent. He thinks he's got something. He runs up to Mario to grab or something, and then Mario just does tornado because tornado comes out on frame one. Yeah. Falcon gets caught in it, and that leads to that's a guaranteed up smash or up tilt. It's guaranteed. And then Falcon's the eyes out of the tornado, which is hard. hard. Which a lot of people don't know how to do. I don't know how to do it. How do how do you yeah. do that? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like box goes like it's on the sides. There's actually mm. four of them. It makes a little box. Oh, like Samus's? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, each shape box sends you towards the center. So trying to the eye outside, uh, out, out of it is like... Because then you're going to hit by two of them. Okay. Yeah, it just doesn't work. So you have to go up, and then it will like spit you up and out. Mm. That makes and sense. And then you have to watch out, because the Mario can also rise with you to to prevent you from de out. So you have to like react really fast to that. And then you have to... Can you de down, then, if they start to rise up? If, if they go too high. So it's kind of, you can possibly mix them up. Interesting. I do want to have, I want to have an episode about Mario. Probably because my hate for the character. But also <laughs> because I think, yeah, like, I don't know. I think there's a lot to lot to be said about the character. Just because he's kind of the default, right? Like you, in any game you have, like um, Ryu in Street Fighter is like the template for what all the other characters are like. And Mario is kind of what that is in Smash. You know, you have Mario a projectile. Mario is literally the Ryu of this yeah. game. <laughs> right, because it has the, the Hadouken, has the Dragon Punch. But... Spinning kicks. Yeah, right, whatever the, whatever that's called. <laughs> um, that's okay. Too. Oh, yeah, see, see, I'm not a Street Fighter player, you can tell. Um, I love Street Fighter. I tried to get into it, but that's nice. that's that's a topic for another time. Um, one, one thing that I want to bring up, so um, Dog is a Colorado player and I was like what does this guy play and I looked and he he does Kirby and Fox and I was like I, I didn't understand that right that seems odd it seems odd when you hear it right like you know like that doesn't make any sense and I think yeah, there's he just 
I guess he just bust out Fox for that Pikachu match. <laughs> right, that's what I said. I was like, <laughs> I was like, he's like, when I met him in person, he's like, dude, I thought you were gonna be a dick because you're like, because <laughs> I was like, you know that we have Pikachu's, right? Like, <laughs> like there's no. Maybe he bust out Fox for Jigglypuff. <laughs> right, <laughs> but that's it was. Legit. Hey, but matchup. If I, if I, if I, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to face Jigglypuff in that matchup. Right. It was. It was uh. But then I thought, but it's not just the matchup spread. So that's one of them is you might have a secondary to cover a matchup. Um, but you might also have it. I don't know. I feel like you have, you choose your secondaries because of how they feel. Um, I, I was talking to Jimmy Joe. It might've been after the last um, podcast or maybe it was on it um, about how there's people that like different um, kind of different styles. And you have like, like you have a lot of Fox Falcons, right? You have a lot of Pikachu Kirby's. And I think it's because they kind of handle in similar ways, a little bit less so with Pika Kirby, but you have that fast fall or that speed and you have, you know, that kind of floaty, whatever the hell those characters do. I don't know. <laughs> One of those interesting combos that I've seen is Samus Falcon. For some reason, Samus means pick up mm -hmm. Falcon. Yeah, I had that. And, I know I, she I've heard jokes that like, oh, they're the same character. And it, that sounds really odd. <laughs> There's... Uh, <laughs> they're, I don't know they're if you guys... bounty hunters. They're definitely the same character. Is that what they? Is Falcon a bounty hunter? No, I don't think he's yes, really a bounty yes, hunter. People like, just make jokes. Oh, okay. No, he is a bounty hunter. Like that's yeah. like oh, okay. Lori's East racer, like part time bounty hunter. Because <laughs> I had, I had a. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard this or not. Growing up, Shivik. is that I had? Well, don't say Shivik because what I'm about to tell you. I have the rumor going around on my block was that that they were like brother and sister or cousins or something like that oh, and like funny. yeah and i'm from kansas and my friend from iowa is like oh we had heard like i think i had heard brother and sister like oh we had heard that they're cousins so there's like a rumor that actually is big enough to spread there but they do have i mean they're the same moveset right same there same there <laughs> same just like everyone of the same they have a down same up tilt Yes, yeah, so, oh yeah, there it is. Down slash. This theory's perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, we have one of those too. We have a yeah. They're the same. They're the same person. Yeah, well I mean when you have the same mother and father, it's gonna be pretty easy to have the same moveset. <laughs> um on, isn't, uh, isn't there a F Zero character named James McLeod who is like identical to Fox's father? Oh, dude, that's yeah, like the same. He's wearing the same outfit, like the colors and everything. Oh my god. Yeah, apparently, like the canon is that F Zero and Star Fox exist in the same universe. I think I am not sure on that one though. That's weird. <laughs> I feel like I, I can... don't know anything about either one of those universes, but I'm appalled nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of clones, um, I'm a I'm I dual main Kirby and Jigglypuff, which seems like the most pointless thing in the world too. I I yeah. made Jigglypuff in every Smash game, so I kind of had to play her in this one. And I don't know, I find that like I play Jigglypuff when I feel like being more aggressive, which I think is even weirder than the fact that I co-main Jigglypuff and Kirby. And I play Kirby when I feel like I need to rely more on ship damage. That makes sense, because because Kirby with dupe of this there's a much bigger payout or you know reward when you when you go offensive and you finally land one hit, whereas with Kirby you you take so much damage just to land one back here and it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. That that's kind of that's kind of like how it's felt whenever I play tournament sets like. I'll start off with one or the other and see how it goes. And if I think I need to be more aggressive, I'll stay Puff. If I think I need to be more defensive, I'll switch to Kirby. What? Or I think depending it's... on the matchup, like some Pikachu is I prefer Puff, some Pikachu is I prefer Kirby. Versus Yoshi, I'll usually go Puff, even though Kirby is like a much better matchup. It's just my personal preference, I guess. I don't know. It's weird dual maining, especially when the characters like clones of each other. I think that's super. I think that's interesting because I have I know people that I know two people that are are besides you that are are Jigglypuff, um, Kirby Kirby co mains, and I think it's I think it's actually because they they want to play Jigglypuff but they're not good enough at the jigs, 
So they... For me, it's like, I actually do play Jigglypuff in every Smash. Like, before yeah. I got into 64, I was, like, a Jigglypuff fanatic, but I also played Kirby in Brawl, so I picked him up in 64 mm-hmm. as well. But in Brawl, I also play Ness, Dedede, Wario, and Peach, who are all floaties with weird-ass second jumps or multiple jumps, which is, like, Jigglypuff and Kirby in 64. So it was, like, the two characters that already kind of suited the playstyle I was used to. And, like, I play Villager in Smash 4, too. Like, that's just another one of my long list of dumbass Bodhi characters that are, like, Kirby clones. <laughs> that's fun. So you, gotta, you, have a, you have a type, right? Like, my type is just, like, walling people out. Like, I play, like, Sheik in Melee. Like, that twice a year that I play Melee. Because they're just, yeah, like, being an so. asshole. <laughs> Like, I, I play, I play like, super derpy floaties, I guess, in every Smash, and in every single Smash game I have a Puff, and Puff is, like, probably my best character in each one, which is dumb, because, like, Puff is only good in one game. But that's just how it is. Puff's I, it's fine like, in 64. Oh, yeah, she's, like, mid-tier, I guess. She's not, like, as godly. She, yeah, well, she is mid-tier, but I, I say that because, like, compared to Kirby, Kirby's great. Okay, yeah. But, uh... I guess I guess my type. I've been in competitive Smash for five years, and that's kind of like I started off playing Kirby and Ness and Brawl, so I was I kind of like confined myself to the floaty stereotype, I guess. Well, there's okay. I just realized I didn't tell you guys the the payoff to this to the the Falcon Kirby. I so I asked him like point blank. I'm like, why do you do both of these? And he goes, I play Kirby. But people hate me for it, so I play Fox. <laughs> oh, I hate that. And I was I like, that. I was like, dude, you know people hate Fox too, right? <laughs> like, I don't know what you're doing here. You should never pick a character for because the community hates you for it. That's dumb. Yeah. The community will hate you for the way you brush your hair. Like, who gives a shit, right? Well, yeah, yeah, I've gotten. I think that's I true. I constantly worry about how I bring it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's funny because like people only hate you and damn Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> people only hate you when you're good, right? Like I was when I was like just, like totally horrible on online. No one would pay me any mind, and then like. I got okay, and I would start to beat some people, and they'd be like, man, Fox is a stupid character, all you do is play Fox, and like, pick Fox against me and lose in the matchup, and then I'm like, you know, I play this character, right? Like, you can't just pick it up and beat me. And they'll be like, whatever, <laughs> I'm out of here. People are going to complain about a character or a play style. Like, I, I played someone in DK Dittos, and every stock, I won with four throw, four throw punch. And I got pissed, it's like, don't let me grab you at 0%. Yeah. Well, like, this was online, too, right? I feel like half the dialogue that happens in Lobby is just people complaining about the guy they just played. Like, you just tune it out after some point. Like, I don't play Kirby in friendlies because I usually don't play very defensively in friendlies. I prefer playing Puff, but for God's sake, all people online just, like, they complain too much about the guy they just played. Yeah, because you can't look at, like, you can't look at someone in the eyes and be like, you're going to complain to me in the face. Like, let's, you know, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, so one thing I do want to talk about with secondaries is that um, it's uh, I always worry like if I only have you know ten hours this week to play Smash, I want to be getting as good as possible, right? Like I want to be getting as that, that's my goal. I want to be as getting as good as possible as quickly as possible. So I play one character and I think that's way how I should spend my time. But if I picked up Falcon for the Pikachu matchup or whatever. I don't know, I feel like... Pick up Pikachu for the Pikachu matchup. <laughs> I can't do it, dude. I don't have the... I have, I can't even do the up B correctly as Pikachu. It's horrible. I'm I'm awful at Pikachu. Just pick whatever you're most comfortable with against Pikachu. Right? That's Well, that's my thing. It's like, I don't want to be... If, if I go up and say I train really hard, and I get onto Kiro's level, and I go, alright, he has a Pikachu, and he has a Kirby. And I can beat his Kirby with my Fox, and I can beat his Pikachu with my Falcon. And then I have to guess, like, what is he going to start out as? If I want a chance at beating him, either I'm going to, I have to risk conceding game one, or I have to get good enough to win in that matchup as my worst character. In which case, why did I pick up a secondary? I don't know. I mean, you're always going to have one character that's stronger. Mm. So, like, I don't know. I used to be worried about playing a Kirby. So I'd like, like, oh, man, should I start out as Jigglypuff? I don't know. 
but now it's like, eh, screw it. I'll just start as Falcon and see what happens. Yeah. Like, do you have a Jigglypuff? Yeah. What do you have? That's, that's, I, that's like who I will play against some Falcons or some Kirby's. Interesting. I kind of suck at the Falcon matchup. So yeah. I'll Jigglypuff. <laughs> That's a brutal matchup. I don't like that. Like, I think there's some dittos that are good and some dittos that are not good. <laughs> like, Fox dittos I love, even though I don't understand it. Like, you know, like, I don't understand. I call them hand grinders, because, like, I just have to press buttons as quickly as possible. That's the only way I can make it through. Fox, Fox dittos are just a bat laser to back throw, dude. How do you do it? <laughs> well, I mean, but you can get under the laser or get above the laser. I don't know. I don't understand it yet. Like most matchups, I can be like, I could teach someone it. I, like if I know it well enough, you know, I can be like, oh, this is what you do in this situation against Falcon. Like I could write a book on it. I might not be the best author if that's a metaphor that we're going to continue, but you know, <laughs> I can tell you about it. But I have a Fox matchup, I'm just like press buttons quickly and hit them, and then do the dash attack off the ledge to eat their second jump, and then you can shine spike him. It's beautiful. It's the best shine spike in the world. I'm sorry. Is it a triple? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's a triple shine spike. Oh my god. <laughs> um, oh. So yeah, you know, Jason says that you know you're always gonna have a character that's better than the other ones. Um, but the one one of the reasons I also say like you should just pick one that you're that you that you're comfortable with, and that that's not necessarily the most optimal character for that matchup. Is because your your the reason for you feeling more comfortable with it is because you understand you understand it better and in, instead of just going with the tier list, you should go with what you're better like simply better at. Uh, for example, it when you when 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 you say like oh, uh, what would you pick up to counter Falcon? Hmm. Kirby, right? You would you pick Kirby or even Falcon himself? Because or it's, Fox. it's really easy to pick Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> it's popular opinion. I'm a popular opinion. Mm. Uh, it's you know a lot of people will will, will Falcon Dero Boom Boom fan and they'll do pretty well against them because it's a it's a pretty easy matchup to just gra like grab Falcon and, uh, and um because you have the same tools as him so you can just grab him once and kill him and with Kirby it's just he just naturally like it's a naturally hard matchup for Falcon so those those are two characters that you would think if I want to be Falcon which you know those are the two second names I pick up. But me, like, I have, um, Mar Mario was, like, the first ma uh, character I mained years ago before I played Yoshi. And after playing a few years of Street Fighter, I understood fireball control better, like, how to zone, how to how to force someone to move in the way that I want to. And I was able to apply that really well to Mario Falcon. So instead of, so if I say, if I picked Kirby in that, ma in that match against Stranded and Smash Con, he probably would have been in my Kirby, because, because I, I wouldn't have that much experience, that, that much um, familiarity with Kirby Falcon, and he would have, and he has, I, I'm pretty sure he has way more practice beating uh, Kirby's as Falcon. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want to do, definitely don't want to do, uh, like, just counterpick something blindly, like, I think this is supposed to be good against this character, like, you just definitely have to have that competency, absolutely. So you know, if if you if you pick like you know Pika again to counter Pikachu's, I would have to. You, you, right. you, you have to be be better, like be flat out better than your opponents. Right. Instead of maybe playing on their weakness for a matchup they're not as familiar with, or a matchup that you you're more comfortable with, with than they are. Yeah, that's. I definitely like that. I definitely think that I'm, like I'm having a lot of ideas as you're saying this. Because I'm thinking well, like, 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 I noticed this like happen in, in several, a few examples at Genesis three where, you know, a, a lower tier character obviously is as a disadvantage. But one of the advantages is that nobody, that a lot of people don't have experience against those lower tiers. Uh, Core versus Stranded at Genesis three was, it was a two zero by Str uh, Stranded one, but both times I think it came down to the last stock. And one of them, Core just killed himself. Yeah, he just killed himself at the end. Like, he could have done a really easy, like, ledge get up to, like, forward tilt or something, but he just, like, down air off the edge and, you know, really fancy suicide kill. <laughs> well, that's definitely, yeah, so that's, I was talking to someone about, about this, I don't even remember, but it was like, look, if you're going to go against 
a low tier, a, a matchup that you know or that you're better at, like Kirby Falcon, that Falcon's going to know that matchup. You know, just past a certain point, if you fight a Fox as your Pikachu, Fox is going to know that matchup if they want a chance at, like, getting far in bracket or whatever their goals are. Otherwise, they're just going to get murdered. So they're like, you just have to get, you, they're going to grind it out as much as possible. Especially nowadays that you have people to play against regularly, you have online to play against. I don't know, I feel like, I feel like you have to know, you have to have good practice partners for all these matchups if people are going to be, I mean, you don't have to know for Ness, because who plays Ness, but, you know, anyone that you might go against. What? <laughs> What's that? No one plays Ness anymore. We're dirt, yeah. They're extinct. I it's think there's... Uh, just Z-Rex and Marvels. Oh, yeah. It's fire. Yeah, Marvels, yeah. Was like, Marvels was like, nah, I'm going Pikachu at Genesis. No Ness. <laughs> Dude, that's... I mean, like, the bottom three, who uses... I mean, you can say Court uses Link, but, like, he's, like, the last one, right? <laughs> like, you don't he have uses any... uses Samus. Samus is fine. Samus is a fine character. Yeah. Samus is not a great character, <laughs> but she's yeah. fine. She's okay. Yeah, she's not okay. She's not... Yeah. She's I think okay. she. I think she's better <laughs> than Mario. Maybe a little worse than Mario. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and, and not... I don't know about matchup spread. Mm. I don't know. Matchup spread. Mario might have a slight advantage. We'll see. Do we gotta I make like the, the stuff? We gotta make a. Uh, we gotta make the the matchup chart. Haven't we been talking about that for like years? Like, oh, let's make the definitive matchup spread chart. That whole, like, I I swear there's three different threads on Smash Boards that were like, oh, this is the definitive one, and then there's just bakering like. Well, what does six four mean? What does fifty five forty five mean? Because those are just like arbitrary things. And yeah, I really I mean, hope either way, the tier list project doesn't Sony become like that. Chart, and then we'll spend the rest of the year arguing about Pika Falcon. <laughs> 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 that's funny. Oh. Yeah, I, I that's actually par, par, partly my fault. Like I said in one of those Facebook discussions that I was gonna make a a, a survey so people can like we do another community voted because we did a community voted tier list and that's what we accepted as a tier list. So then we were like, oh, so community voted like matchup spread or matchup chart, and I'm like, all right, I'll I'll, I'll make a survey when I get home, and then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> not like not i didn't think it was a good idea or like i thought it could be too much work and it was like oh yeah i, I forgot i was supposed to do that thanks for reminding me jim <laughs> hey, that, not, that's good because now we're like that was way before genesis 3 now after genesis 3 people have refreshed opinions so it'll be nicer to have to see what the community thinks yeah. or we can make a, the dreamland 64 back room and we can release this matchup shred. I guess we have oh, Kiro yeah, on it. Whoever wants to hear my opinions about the matchup chart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you... Kiro's matchup shred is like Falcon S tier, and then it's like B tier Pikachu. Like... Oh god, and Shears? <laughs> oh, that'd be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have... Pikachu, very bottom Pikachu's of the tier list. I have, so... No, no, he's like Z tier, when everyone else is like B. <laughs> we have... I don't know. If, I know that no one knows about this, but I have, I prepare for all these at least somewhat, and I have like a spreadsheet that has like all these potential topics and like people I might invite on and like questions that I might want to ask people. And I know that I send it out to uh, to you two and to you know all the people that are regularly on here. And I know that no one reads it. It doesn't matter. But I know that like I write like oh we should talk about like balances. Like what if we what would we do in a balance balance change if there was one balance patch. And I was like, we cannot let Shears on this. That's what I wrote. I'm like, Shears is not allowed to be on this podcast. He cannot talk about his stupid opinions. <laughs> oh, my God. He would just make Pikachu's up B do damage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. There we go. Game balanced. He'd give three of them. He's like, because Pikachu's up B doesn't have any mix-ups. <laughs> oh, my God. He just, he just wants it to do damage. Does he actually said that? Oh, my God. Like, well, yeah, he always he says that. Pikachu is the easiest character in the game to edge guard because his up B is is safe to to edge guard because it doesn't do any damage. Zip, I can, zap. I, I can't even. I mean, part of like part of it makes sense. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like it's it's, it's, it's oh, a I'm risk. Sure I've said stupider. <laughs> Not to me yet. <laughs> because if you if you miss it or like. I don't know. You're not gonna get 
punished for like missing the P missing the edge guard on Pikachu. So so what you're telling me what you're telling me is that Shears has no concept of stage position or opportunity cost. Really just doesn't I'm not gonna pretend to argue. He doesn't have does he just not understand what does he understand about this game? Because he's a decent player. What does he? Just I, I just I just you know give Shears the benefit of the doubt when it comes to healing. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. He understands that Blue Hat Pika is the best Pika. Arguable. The non-fascist Pika. <laughs> Pika's top two, top two definitely. Anyway, um. God, we got way off topic. I don't think it matters though. <laughs> Zip zap. Um. Oh, here's a question for you guys. At what point should someone pick up a secondary? Me, uh, that's that's one. Question. Just, just start playing a bunch of characters. Right when you start yeah, playing. Yeah, isn't that what everyone else in this game does? I, okay, so I used to play. I used to have a few characters, and then I started like putting time into one character. And then when I did that enough, it was just like, I would go back and I'd be like, oh, I want to try playing Mario or Yoshi or, you know, Falcon or whatever. And even my Falcon, who used to be my main, I'm like, it's not fun to play him anymore. It's like, I don't know how to control him and he's so awkward. And like, what do I, what am I supposed to do? This down B comes out after like 17 frames. It's so awkward. Like, I can't do this anymore. So I just play one character. I don't know. Yeah, I would say just keep... Uh, you know, outside of bracket, just keep playing all the characters. Learn like learn as much as you can about all of them. Just play them for fun or to learn all of them. And then, in bracket, you pick whoever you think. Oh, like oh, I wanna. I feel like I think my this character is gonna be better for me, and the it's gonna give me better results or a better chance at winning. And then yeah, that's like, how honestly, you'll naturally find your secondary. I don't think there's like any real argument against picking up a secondary if you want to play just one character then go ahead just play one character but i don't know if anyone like really suffers for having multiple characters in their repertoire well, i guess my I mean, you can like kind of mind game yourself sometimes like psych yourself out and you're like i don't know i'm not too comfortable with this i'm gonna pick this other character that i'm not as good with like people do that all the time and then later, like, ah, oh, I should have just gone with my name, you know? Like, yeah. I've seen that happen with people, in, especially in other Smash games, where they really need to learn more than one character, usually. Oh, like yeah, in Smash they, 4, they you mean? from that a lot. Like, Melee, Smash 4, Project Time, whatever, you name it. Like, they'll, they question themselves a lot. Like, damn, I, should have, I shouldn't have stayed, or I should, or I should have stayed. What's... Well, I don't know. I mean, you want a good example of someone who picked up a secondary because it helped them? Look at Armada. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, well, there's there's the there's the success story of that and also the opposite. Oh, God, I think we dropped that call. I'm going to continue monologuing until it comes back. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. I was like, everyone, like, froze for a second. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> um, so at first, at first uh, Armada was losing to Hungry Box because Peach, Peach uh, uh, Jigglypuff is not good for Peach. Then he picked up Young Link for that matchup right. and had some success and then just, like, it no longer worked. So then he was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And then eventually picked up Fox and now does it for Fox and for Jigglypuff. I mean, I don't know. So that is kind of an interesting, that is a success story. I'll give you that one. You got me on that, shit, Dark. Yeah, I mean, you know, he might have been just kind of reluctant to play box because that's what everyone played maybe like how like myself or fire blaster or whiz were whiz rogue or these people like don't play pikachu mm. now it's like like i don't want to play pikachu because it's pikachu um but who knows maybe like maybe it would really help having that i mean one of the uh to ca i mean as a counter example well at genesis 3 you know grand finals he he was using grand you know you know up to grand finals he was using fox the whole way and then I think right and then when he faced Mango in grand finals he got like three one like almost three would by by Mango's fox and fox Uh then he then he busted out Peach on the the after the bracket reset and that won him that won him the whole tournament so yeah. for Armada it's a strange he, thing. there's 
There's some uh, foxes where he does better with Peach, and some where he does better with in the Ditto. I think, like, with at least the five, like, melee gods, so to speak, I think all of them except Hungry Box have a secondary that they use. Like, Mutual King plays Sheik and Marth, PPMD plays Marth and Falco, Mango plays Fox and Falco, Armado plays uh, Fox and Peach. I think, like, recently... I think up until very recently, it was thought that you should only really have one main, but now more of the melee figureheads are starting to say like people really benefit from having a secondary in that game. I mean, and I think I think the 64, same might apply to this one too. Like, who who in what top player in sixty four just plays one character? Wizro. And every well, every Japanese player. Japanese players <laughs> and Wizro. And Wizro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And the Japanese players, it's probably just a product of their tournaments. Like the yeah. fact they had the character set. lock. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to get so much hate for that, for so much melee talk. No idea. I'm going to get like private message from Stud still. Yeah. How dare we relevant examples from other sources? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, um, geez, I talked about sports at one point. Dude, I I always kicked you off for that. I'll be honest. I was very I was so I'm close. Not, I'm not gonna say John Madden over and over again in this call. I'm, I'm really holding back right now. Oh my god. Well, I, I have no idea how hard this is for me. Oh. So when I mean, I mean when you, when you mentioned that like well, the reason none of us play Pikachu or whatever like I'll I'll say I'll say mine mine so it's not like a mystery. I don't play Pikachu because I genuinely don't think I'll I'm as like I'll be as good with him as I am with. Yoshi, right as of right now, anyways. Uh, I play I, I play Pikachu in doubles because it works out for me. But then I notice that like when I when it comes down to one v one scenarios, I'm a lot weaker and I'm way more inexperienced. And I just I'm not gonna beat P, 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 uh, Pikachu mains in you know in experience when it comes you know when it comes to that matchup and anyone else who plays a top tier. So that's like I, I, I'm I the same way with Kirby. Think, yeah. I play Kirby in, in doubles only. Um, yeah. Just in, like, I can't, the way I play him in doubles is not going to translate to singles. <laughs> you I mean... can't just run around and only use neutral air. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that won't work. that's how I am. That's how I am with doubles. I do, I do DK in doubles sometimes, but in singles, you just can't be spit out of a Kirby into another player very well. It just doesn't work out that well. <laughs> so... Possible. <laughs> Dude, don't I tell me it's possible. Kirby more than Puck in doubles as well. Like doubles, I think is a meta game that I'm a lot stronger at. But I don't know. It it really depends on who I'm teaming with. If I'm teaming with someone that I have a lot of uh, synchronicity with, then I'll use Puff because I know exactly where they're gonna send my opponent and I can rest them. But if I'm not so sure, like when I team with Raven, we had never teamed before in our lives, even in a friendly at Genesis three. So I went Kirby because like I wasn't really sure what we were gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like going puff and doubles unless I'm playing against like a Samus. Oh, and screw I don't that. Like a whole lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I just feel like I'm gonna get my shield broken like five times. Oh. <laughs> that was that was not a good sound. <laughs> Fire blasters seen those. No, I, I've seen I've seen I've seen a lot of that example. Yeah, what he's talking about. Well, you've been watching my stream, Fire Blaster? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about me, not why bomb. I know. <laughs> Dang, that'd be, that'd be cold. <laughs> oh, oh why bomb's great. Actually, I should go wake him up soon, actually. He's asleep at... That's nah, not getting to it. Um, yeah, he's just, he's just taking a nap. We woke yeah. up early today. So one, one thing I, I do see with physical activity is they say, like, say, say, say you want to get into, like, weightlifting. I say avoid cardio at all costs, and like the idea is not like cardio is bad for you, but you can only gain so much, you know, muscle or whatever the hell I don't know. Um, and by splitting your training between the two of them, you're not going to get all of your gains in that one that you're you're focusing on. So I was wondering if you guys if you feel this, if you guys feel the same way about that as it applies to Smash. I mean. Um. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think if you have limited time to practice with each character, it kind of do, it does make sense. It does I think, come down to yeah, time. If, That's a good if point. You have, if you have limited time to spend between your two characters, then 
I think up to a certain point you might benefit a lot from practicing too. I think um maybe like your character familiarity might plateau at a certain point where after while as you're picking up a secondary you might get a lot better with them faster than you would practicing your main. But I don't know. I also think that like there's no there's no real physiology like there is in physical sports that would be a good reason to limit yourself from training to different things at the same time. I think like with a mental sport it's very much a different realm, but I, I do think that as far as time goes, that's that's probably the biggest limiting factor. Yeah, I definitely the the meta or the analogy only <laughs> only works so far. I guess my thing is like even if you say there's limited time though, like obviously if you're someone that can play one hour a week, then it's like dude only play the character if you like one someone that wants to be the best in the world playing one hour a week, you know play the one character right. But if you want to be the best in the world. Everyone has limited time. If, I mean, if you really want to get into it, but it's like you only have so much time. Does splitting your time make it more efficient? It depends what you're doing it for, because some people pick up secondaries so that they can learn how to play that matchup. Like they get really good with another mm -hmm. character, and then they know how to fight that character when they face them in bracket. So I, th I think it all depends on how you go about like training with uh, your other characters versus training with just one. Um, my advice would be to, is uh, if you if you know that you have a weakness for it, like in one of the two characters that you, that you want to get good at, then it make it makes more sense to put in more time into the into the character that that you that you need to like that you know you're gonna make progress in. For example, if I if I have if you no, know, I'm pretty comfortable with Yoshi, but if I haven't learned anything new or if I haven't if I don't, if I can't figure out something I'm currently weak in right now, it wouldn't make much sense for me to just practice tech skill over and over, and put in most of that, you know, several hours into that when I'm, when I'm not learning anything new. I'm just warming up my hands. Mm -hmm. But if I have, like, if I could learn something new with Mario and I and I am not very good at it, I'll put in more time into Mario because that'll that'll benefit benefit me more. Yeah, so it helps you like avoid slumps. Can see that. Yeah, because I mean, you do one thing for too long, you you will, like, you, you run the risk of getting kind of stale. <laughs> yeah, I can only I can only do the the combo starter on the Falcon, you know, up up air into up tilt into down tilt into anything I want. I can only do that so many times before I go insane. That's you, that's why you gotta like start messing around. I know. Like, it's like what I was what I mentioned before we went live, like playing friendlies. Like, I'll just go for weird stuff the whole time I'm playing friendlies. It's just, like, a big game of how can I set up Falcon Punches in different ways. You know, like, because you're right. If I just went for, like, the standard thing every time in a friendly, like, what's the, what's the point? The point is that you can JB6 stalk someone, Jason. That's the point. In a friendly. You Ooh. always do it. You go for it every time. Do you, do you like do you like records that have an asterisk next to it? Because that's exactly what that is. I don't know. You don't count it. But I, I honestly, I do think that there is value in going for JV sixes in in every friendly. Whether or not it's something you should do or not is a different thing. But I think there is something to be said about it. Because if you're like if you, what I normally have done is I play someone worse than me, and it's just like, oh yeah, I'll just kind of mess around. Maybe try some new stuff. Maybe do some standard stuff. You know, we'll see how it goes. If I think I'm gonna JV like six arc this person, I'm like, all right, what is every habit I can pick up on? You know, I am not getting caught with anything on this. I'm gonna kill this guy or girl, I guess. I've seen it both ways. But it's like there's, <laughs> hey, in Iowa we have plenty of women that play Smash. We just don't have very it's proportionally because no one plays Smash. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess just. When I when I'm playing friendlies, like I don't really play Smash outside of like Monday nights when we have tournaments. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't play. I don't I don't sit here in training mode and work on tech skill or combos. Obviously, I don't work on tech skill. Just watching you know, matches. But like, so when I play a friendly, like, that's when I can try new things. Um, so that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, let's see if this works. <laughs> nope, that did not work. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like a it's like a comedian going to like a college campus to try out new jokes. Like you see what doesn't work, and you can use it on a bigger stage. <laughs> now that's that's how that's how I treat them. 
Wow. Yeah, that's how it is for me too. I'm always just trying to try out new things, different options, trying to break out of my habits. That's what I do in friendlies. Fire Blaster, back me up. Tell me that you're ruthless in friendlies and that you're mean to people and you trash talk them. Yeah, if if I, if I think I can JV six someone, I'll go for it. Yeah. Because, because I, I mean, at that point, if I if I sandbag, it'll be really obvious and it'll seem more disrespectful than just showing them everything you've got. Yeah, thank you. Respectful. That's a great. That's the word we were looking for. You know, I won't fire go blaster. For it every game. I won't. I won't try like from the beginning. Like, yeah, I'm gonna JV six like everyone in this room. Like, <laughs> but you know, yeah, if, so... if, if I if I had the option to, and it's it's in uh, it's in See, my, you know, fire blaster. Like, fire blaster gets it. You know, be respectful so you to guys, your opponent. You guys were coaching like a little league basketball team. I would say murder the other team. <laughs> <laughs> you just just brutal. Just. I'd say you're gonna win by sixty points. I would say you're not this many fouls. <laughs> <laughs> I would teach them about Tasha Harding, and then I would instruct them on how to win. That's what are you talking about? I'm not gonna tell them to go easy. You don't learn anything by going easy. You have a mercy roll, obviously, but come on, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what are we doing with time? Yeah, we are getting. When we start doing figure skating references, we've gotten out of probably out of time. You want to <laughs> you want to pull up uh, some questions from the chat? Oh yeah. Anyone? Uh, we don't have any questions. I can't believe I got in all my analogies that I wanted to get in today. I have, uh, I have like four notepads. I have a bunch of notepad documents. Like when I play I was online. Just watching the Super Bowl. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tired so Red Red Carolina. Oh. Vegas just made so much money. I have no idea what happened. Sports ball. <laughs> I know, okay, I know. Yeah, oh my you God. don't know about sports ball? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Fortune likes, Chad? To call it hand Fortune likes to call it hand egg. Oh, my God, don't even... Don't <laughs> oh, even get started on it. Combo, combo blazes in chat. He missed us talking about boss battle. Oh, uh, what does he want it? What was he saying? <laughs> It's like just talk about it again. Smash game, dude. Combo, combo did really well at uh lost battle. Yeah. How then in grand you... finals he just started going for weird stuff and he kept missing everything. He got crushed. Mm -hmm. Direct combo. So you get proclaiming you're the best in the Midwest. You have no idea. We've never played combo. <laughs> I'm the best in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I bet he's probably better than me. They always, Chicago has this thing, they always, every time that they have a tournament, they're like, guess I'm the best in the Midwest now. It's like, dude, you only play Chicago players. Like, you might be, but you don't know. Like, get out of here. I mean, Combo got, Combo got second at the tournament. It's true. He I mean, he's an East Coast player. better than everyone in Indiana, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, he is. According <laughs> to that tournament, he is the best in the Midwest. Favorite cereals of all four people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> One of the questions was favorite cereals of, of all four people. <clears throat> There's a, a really so good. Hard. No, it's super. You guys, you guys clearly buy your cereals out of boxes when you're missing the whole meta of the bag cereal. There's a great. So they have a good fra, um, cinnamon toast crunch variant, but they actually have a blueberry toast crunch variant, and you can oh, mix them together. Amazing. Oh, right? It's amazing. It's so good. It's uh, blueberry toasters. I think. <laughs> Find it at your nearest Walmart. <laughs> I think. I think my favorite might be Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I love Honey Nut Cheerios. They're just really. They're just always good. Another one that I think might be my favorite is Trix because we don't have it in Canada anymore. So whenever it's I have you don't it, have it's kids like there. <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't have any kids in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, all right, Fire Blaster, take us home. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a big cereal person. I guess sometimes I I like Raisin Bran. Oh, dude, I love Raisin Bran. What is wrong with all of you guys? I don't understand you guys. <laughs> well, it, it's good. It's good Raisin for you. It, it, it's good. Is like Raisin Bran. The highlight of Raisin Bran is raisins. And think about that it's statement. Just, I doesn't like raisins. They're great. So raisins should not be raisins should not be the best part of the thing that you're eating. I don't know, man. That's you can make some pretty good crunch. raisin fried rice. Okay, raisin brain crunch has a better. If you started with raisin brain crunch fire blaster, I would 
not go off on that. <laughs> it's, so much, it's like two dollars more though. It's so much more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's five cents more for both. Oh my god! <laughs> Get the math, man. Box is normally like. It's $4. $6. <laughs> price increase. It's outrageous. Dude, Fire Blaster knows frame data and he knows full money data. He, we gotta have a better serial that. frame data. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's some next level shit. <laughs> it is cents per bowl. It's like a new unit of measurement. Dude, that's great. It's the only version. Fire. <laughs> fire bowl. <laughs> All right, guys. Any uh, anything you guys want to sign off on? Anything that we should be aware of coming up besides Shots Fired Two? Uh, a questionable, if not great, tournament coming up uh, in somewhere, hosted by Shears, and it's MPG. Um, <laughs> yeah, I oh, I was gonna go to that, but I don't think I can get the time off of work. Mm. Oh well. If any of you out there live in the Greater Toronto area, our bi-weeklies have become weeklies now, and they're now on Wednesdays, so all you Melee kids that go to Smash on Tap, you can join, and I'll bring my GameCube adapters, because I know there's some Melee people watching right now. Nice. Oh, speaking of weeklies, weeklies have started. The Jim's House series, an offshoot of the Ian's House series, is happening weekly in Des Moines, Iowa, on Thursdays from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. every Thursday. So, so all you truants out there and people that don't work, come on by. <laughs> um, in, in that case, I'll pl I'll plug something from a uh, something local here too. Uh, I'm the the local venue where I go to play uh, PM weekly and melee by weeklies. They're gonna have Gauntlet three, which is uh, a monthly for PM, and it, it included sixty four uh, as an event of uh, singles, and we're gonna have Revan and. Hopefully, Kirill, if, if he doesn't have any car issues, like, he's still like, his car may, may not be the, in the best shape right now, but if, if he has no issue with transportation, he'll definitely come to this. We got Smash Jesus from New Jersey and several people from, from New Hampshire and, Ma and Mass coming down for this, for 64. Wait, Mass is going? No, Mass. Mass. Oh, mass oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Wait, Mass, did you say just... Revan's going? Revan's going, yeah. Oh, that's hype, man. Revan's the greatest. It's yeah, too bad so, that's, no, that's a disappointment. Know, for 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 a sixty four local like first time in Connecticut, like it's gonna be pretty stacked. And the it, COA in, six all over again. <laughs> and NTA wants to get in. He's coming here too, like for some reason. Is he actually, or is he just saying that like he does for every tournament? Like I've asked him, and he just he said, yeah, I just need to find housing. But yeah, I'm going there because oh. I have nothing else to do in uh in February. So yeah, that sounds like an NTA kind of response. That's, uh, I, actually, you guys, there's something kind of serious related to all these. There's been a bunch of tournaments starting up, and I think it's amazing, and I think it's a great opportunity for your 64. I know of people that have had their locals or, you know, statewide or regional or whatever, um, host 64 to try it out, and then not, people did not show up in force, or even, like, kind of show up. And then they said, this wasn't worth the effort, we're going to drop 64. And it's really hard to get 64 back onto it. Once it's been dropped. So I would just urge, if you can, especially now at the beginning, if you can make these every time that they have a new event, if it's possible to make it, please go to it. It helps out everyone in the long run. And I, I think it's a good way to keep all this momentum that we're getting, not only from Genesis, but even from before then, to continue, continue going on. And I don't know. I think it's I think it's very important, at least for people who don't have normal events like they do in Baltimore. Even if you're like you don't think you're good at 64, even if you've never played the game in your life, like just join. It's a fun game, and you're gonna like the people that you play with. Oh yeah. Um, if you want information on upcoming events, everyone should just go to onlinessb.com/calendar. Unless someone already said that. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I got SSB. that linked in the uh, in the guides post that we set up with our top interview as well. Sweet. Yeah, because that that has weeklies, monthlies. Majors, it has everything on there. Awesome. But yeah, cool. definitely. If if you know if if you have a, a brand new like a tournament picking up sixty four for the first time, chances are you're not the only bad one there if you haven't tried it before. It's it's a it's probably it's probably a new scene in that area. And yeah. you can learn along with everyone else who's trying it for the first time. I know that's the case here where everyone who in Connecticut knows me. And they're all going to me for help on get, get making them better at 64, and they're all improving really fast. 
but they all they all understand that they're all new and they're all improving with each other. And you know the the, the success of the, of the first tournament, you know, like like Jim said, it does matter based on what how Gauntlet three does in ter- in terms of turnout for from Connecticut uh, entrance. It will it will most likely become a, a biweekly or a weekly or biweekly here. Yeah. Nice. Along with PM. Yeah, so. really fast. Be sweet. Cool. Well, then I think it's time for us to wrap up. I'm going to sign off in the way that I was taught by the great man, Jason Dark Horse Brody. Catch you guys next time on the DL. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> on the chain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>